Hi, this is Dr. Frederick, uh, just uh, with some comments about the week four discussion boards. Uh, in these discussion boards, you're following your book fairly closely. Um, and if you turn to the sections in your book on sampling distributions uh, and confidence intervals, then you should have very little trouble at all. But let's just review what the uh, purpose of the assignment is. Uh, we're, we're familiar with the sample mean. I just put it in here uh, to indicate that we're going to use it down here. But some of you may not be familiar with this idea of the standard error of the mean. And here's the central idea is that there is a population of instances or observations or people or some sort of measurements that you can draw out of forever. We wanted to find the average age of uh, of a, of adult men, you know, past the age of 18. What is the average age of men above the age of 18? So we, we want to look at all the people who are 19 or older, and we they're so large we would call them a population. Well, we couldn't very easily measure all of them. We would take a sample, and we would try to do representative sampling so that we could make good judgments about what the average age was, but that's a different topic. The point is this, is we're going to take a sample, and we're going to take a hundred, and then we'll put those hundred people back the, such that we could draw them again. We'll take another sample of 100. We can take samples endlessly. And what we learned to be true is that the mean of each 100 becomes a point in a new distribution. And so we, we take 100 men, we find the mean age to be 45.2, that's one point in our new distribution. We take another 100, 46.7, and we keep adding and adding and adding and adding 100, putting them back, take another 100, measure the average, and we have what's called a sampling distribution of, of mean ages. And this is what this little... Uh, mean bar means here under this sigma is we can take the standard deviation of that sampling distribution of means. We have a sampling distribution of means. So to go back, we have a population of men and now we're going to make a new distribution of means. We're going to take means forever first sample of 100, second sample of 100, third sample of 100, so on and so forth. And that distribution of means, that collection of means that we have, has a standard deviation. Now the standard deviation is, is here to get this value called the standard error of the mean, we divide by our sample size. Our sample size is 100. And what you should notice in this expression is this, is the larger our sample size, the smaller this value is going to be. Okay, so essentially it's an estimate of how close we are to the actual population mean. And if, if our n was exactly the same size as uh, our population, it would be a very, very small number. Okay, so here's the idea is that we want to use this value to do something else uh, down here. Here's how we get it. We make a distribution of means, whatever we're sampling. We divide it by n, the square root of n, and we get this value. Now what did you guys do? Well, we have, you know, 10 to 15 students in a group each of who generated a mean, right? Every one of you generated a mean in the exercise of looking at squares. You did, each of you got a mean for the small squares, each of you got a mean for the large squares, and we're considering that collection of means a sampling distribution. That's why I had you put your names over them. That's why I asked you to report them in a certain way, so that this week you could collect your distribution of means, of means, 
that would be your sampling distribution of means. You would compute the standard error of the mean for your sampling distribution. And then in part two, you would make a confidence interval or make a couple of confidence intervals around the mean of your means. Okay? So each of you got a mean for large squares or small squares. We collect those into a sampling distribution. That collection of means itself has a mean. That's this mean right here. And there's a standard deviation for that collection of means. We divide it by the square root of the number of means we collected, and then we get the standard error of the mean. Now, what is a confidence interval? Well, we say this. There is a true value. There is a true value of the mean of your large squares or small squares. And each time you do that exercise of touching the squares and clicking and clicking back and, and, and clicking back and forth and seeing how fast you can touch the squares, every time you do that is not actually what your true value is. And there is a true value for the, the entire class, but sometimes you're faster, sometimes you're slower. This is the idea of variability. Well, what we want to do is to estimate what the true class mean is and what way we do it is we say, it's somewhere in here. We cannot do it with great precision, but we say the true mean is somewhere in here, which is a confidence interval. It's somewhere inside the mean plus or minus some value. So let's say that the mean of means for your collection is 1,000. The standard error of the mean is 50. It's 1,000 plus or minus, now some value times 50. And we're pretty sure that the mean, the true mean of all the students who participated is somewhere in there. How confident are we? Well, we're 95% confident. 95% of the time, the mean will be in there. It's not exactly precise to say that, but it's okay for this class to say it that way. Well, if we wanted to be more confident... Would we have a bigger interval or a smaller interval? If we wanted to be 99% confident, would we have to cover more distance to have a broader interval? Yes, of course. So the real question is, what is this value Z? It's in your book. These are common numbers that we all know uh, in statistics. And you should learn them. Uh, I could just tell you, but it's, you know, I'd like for you to re open up your book and read it and find those numbers. What's the value Z? Here's one way that you can do it. Here is a normal distribution. And we say we want to find 95% um, of the area here. We want to find 95% of the area. Here's 95% our mean plus or minus some values, plus some values, minus some values, gives us 95%. This would be a 95% confidence interval. Let's do a 90%. This is 90%. Do you see how it's more narrow? Here's 95%. Let's do 99%. Okay. Here, let's do 80%. Here's 80% confidence. We have less confidence the narrower the interval is, and we have more confidence the wider the interval is. And if you do the confidence interval this way, it'll tell you the Z values that give you that range. Here we would multiply the standard error of the mean by negative 1.28 Z, or positive 128Z and add it to the mean to get this confidence interval. 